What is going on guys? We're gonna be taking a look at the top 25 sales from the Love of the Game auction. This just ended recently. They had some amazing cards. Some rules for this video, buyer's premium is gonna be included in the price. Taxes and shipping are not included in the prices. And I can't 100% confirm if a buyer has paid for a card or not. And this video is sponsored by the social media website Mantle. Imagine a mixture of Twitter and Instagram but it's just collectibles. And you can see uh, Sports Collector Digest had an article they put on there about Judge, Mantle, and Joe DiMaggio. Look, right now it is political season. It's probably filling up your feed, whether you're on Instagram or Twitter. And if you only want to look at cardboard like myself, it's pretty annoying. And this platform is built just for collectible news and cards. There are other forms of collectibles that are posted on there, but 90% of the content is going to be Cards. Uh, this was a T428, a very rare card that I have from Australia that I posted under my mantle piece. What's awesome is I've partnered with them this month to do a giveaway for three brand new users to the website. So what I'm giving away is an 1888 Ginter flag. I have about 30 of these right now, so feel free to choose whatever country you want. A 1960 Warren Spawn that's in pretty good shape. And I'm also giving away $20 PayPal. So that way, if you don't want one of those two cards, you can buy whatever you want. Uh, the link is going to be down below in the description. It is 100% free to join. And they are sponsoring this video as well as other videos. So if you guys do enjoy these videos, sign up for Mantle, check it out, and post some content on there. It's 100% for free. And uh, yeah, you get entered into the giveaway for one of these three items. I'll be announcing the winners at the end of the month. With that being said, let's take a look at uh, the top 25 cards. So we have, we're starting off with a Punch Cigaros. And uh, this is from the Richard Merkin collection, which I think a lot of these have populated from. And this player was a catcher in both the Cuban and the Negro Leagues and is in the Cuban Baseball Hall of Fame, uh, which you'll notice over time... Uh, some of the different players that played in the Negro Leagues are in the Cuban Hall of Fame. There's a decent amount in there. Uh, this one sold for $10,000, which to most people, you're like, yeah, that's, that's a crazy expensive price point for someone you've never heard of. But these cards are very, very tough. Uh, one thing that's really cool about the set is uh, they actually have some of the MLB players too. Uh, Cobb is in the set. I don't know what Cobb would do at auction. I assume it would be a crazy amount of money. Up next is a 1955 Tops Complete set. Uh, 206 cards, 2% X Mint or better, 9% X, 29% very good X, 41% VG, 18% good. Uh, this one sold for $10,200. You can see the 55 Clemente is in a three and your Kofax is in a six, which is a really awesome grade. Uh, old Haas, and this is one of the poses that he has in set. He has multiple old judge cards. Uh, one of 27 two-player cards were just one player's identified. Uh, the other player has been identified, like they know who it is, but the identification on this is based off of, uh, you can see right over here, it just says Old Haas Redborn, uh, Pitcher Boston, rather than both player names. Uh, regardless, this 1.5 is sold for $10,500. I believe also Old Haas has the card where he's uh, flicking off the camera. I can only imagine what that goes for now. 1961 Mickey Mantle autograph from this famous uh, 61 home run race year. There's 73 of these that are great at PSA. $11,100, although this is a really nice copy. Um, strong centering and eye appeal on this, in my personal opinion. I think that auto should have gone at least a nine. Uh, Lewis Loudermilk, I probably mispronounced the last name, but uh, this card for a while has been considered the T207 Wagner uh, there's 64 graded between PSA and SGC. For whatever reason, this is kind of short printed in that set. Uh, there's a decent amount of these still at 64 in comparison to people that are going after the T207 set, but it's it's a tough one to find. Also $11,100. In our 20 spot, 1961 Fleer Basketball Complete Set. Um, 15 cards have only been graded in this set. Uh, it's been up for auction, but you can see the Wilt is a six, the Oscar is a six, Russell got a four, and the Jerry West got a 5.5. This one sold for $12,000. 1917 Boston Shore, a very similar design to the Collins McCarthy. 
Uh, these are very, very tough to find. Uh, this set also features the first horn speed card, and uh, I've been trying to find that for a while. And no luck, although I probably can't afford it anymore. Uh, regardless, this Wagner sold for almost $14,000. In the 18th spot, uh, 33 Gaudi Ruth. We see these all the time. 144, the famous double print. Although it's my favorite design of the four Ruths in this set. Roger Connor, Hall of Fame infielder. And he was the home run leader before Babe Ruth. Uh, this one sold for $15,000. 1949 Leaf Jackie Robinson. is his most popular card. This in a four sold for $15,000. E121, Babe Ruth holding the ball. He has multiple poses within the set. Uh, this 2.5 sold for $15,600. Uh, Deacon White. Uh, this apparently passed through his estate. Uh, and it was mentioned that this was first sold in 2006. And uh, the sold price was $16,200. I will say it's crazy how many generations uh, that this passed through, right? 1888. I have I have no idea when Deacon White passed away, but uh, probably his grandchild or great grandchild sold this card. Uh, 1909 Ramley T204 Walter Johnson. This one uh, sold for seventeen thousand four hundred dollars. A little bit of paper loss here on the front, but it does have really really good eye appeal. Uh, 1952 Jackie Robinson man I, I think the corners are sharp on this but this is terribly miscut you can see uh, the diamond cut on it and how crooked this is and off centered because of that but uh, $17,400 1888 Goodwin Champs Cap Anson 7 graded higher at PSA this sold for $17,400 one of the best looking cards in the hobby all right, so before we jump into our top 10, as always, I want to go over our honorable mentions. Up first, a Z-Nut. Uh, these were issued out of California for the Pacific Coast League. Uh, and you'll see a lot of these that mention without coupon. Actually, the coupons at the bottom were trimmed off by a lot of collectors. So there's a premium if you can find this. Uh, th and this is a Heelman before he played in the MLB. Very tough to find. Uh, there are a few other MLB players that are in the Xenot sets, and uh, this sold for $13.80. Original Type 1 photo of Yogi Berra. This is the same image as a 1950 Bowman. Uh, in the top 10, there's an SGC 9 of the 50 Bowman, so I wonder if uh, the person bought both of these. And uh, yeah, I've never seen this original Type 1, so pretty cool. Uh, this is a printer's scrap copy. I always find these pretty interesting. They will, they don't belong in my personal collection, but I think these are awesome uh, based off of, you know, look how many overprints we have on the back of this card and uh, really, really unique. Also, it's kind of funny evidence of trimming. Uh, I would have just labeled that as authentic, not the nitpick, but it's kind of cool. Also, the same side of things. Uh, 1960 Oscar Robertson. This was issued a year before his 61 Fleer and, and a two of this sulfur 3840. These uh, pre- Rookie cons uh, of Robertson and like Jerry West, they've been getting expensive over the years. U.S. President's set. Uh, this surprised me on the sale prices. Uh, this sold for $44.40. Uh, not the most desirable set of U.S. President cards, but it sold well. Uh, same with this J.D. Larkin. Uh, for the longest time, these Larkin cards were easy to find. They're, they're drying up. But uh, just for reference point, SGC4 of this Lincoln sold for $1,100 and this full set sold for $48. Now, Lincoln outsells Washington a little bit, but still, uh, this was a very, very high price for this, in my opinion. And if you do collect non-sports, I do have a non-sports Facebook group so where you can buy, sell, trade. Uh, and if you want to join that, I will also have that linked all right, uh, Mac Speedy, 1950 uh, Bowman, passed away in 1993, so there's not a lot of these over here. And uh, Hall of Fame, this sold for 56.40. I'm curious on the authentic grade because this looks uh, pretty nice overall. A Briggs chocolate of Babe Ruth on here. 
This is a Boston only release and the only baseball player in the set. It sold for 6600 in a 1.5. I, I haven't it, had any tickets on the channel yet, but I added a few in. If you guys like me adding in some of the other obscure items that sell at these auctions, let me know. But this is Jeter MLB debut. $7,800 on this one in a 1. Wayne Gretzky debut. $12,000. $600. I'm curious what the pops are in comparison to these two tickets. Uh, 1943 uh, through 48 parade. Apparently, these are this is uh, Jackie Robinson's first issue on cardboard, or at least that's what I've heard. Uh, these are giant, as you can tell, the sob 8700 on this one. Uh, E107 Eddie Plank 7500. And there's a full E107 set, I believe, at Golden, uh, which is going to sell well over a million dollars. 1959 Home Run Derby, Hank Aaron, first Home Run Derby, and uh, I had to show this one because it's always pretty cool to see these. King Kelly, portrait over here, and uh, really awesome card within the old Judge set. 10,000 Kelly right there with his nickname. And uh, B18 Blankets Master Set, 176 out of the 201 Blankets is sold for $9,300. Original type one photo of Satchel Page from 1942. This has got expensive fast. $10,500. Do really like that imagery though. Imagine if that was on a card. Thurman Munson is signed a baseball. There's not many of these out there because he passed away in a plane crash during his plane career. $12,000 on this copy. A Babe Ruth Underwood and Underwood. Uh, first New York appearance. $40,800. Dollars. Another Babe Ruth from 1920. $64,800. Paul Thompson. All right. Let's jump into our top 10. 1959 Home Run Derby McMahon. $18,000 for a PSA 5. The 1950 Barra, as I mentioned, uh, this was the same as the Type 1. $18,600 in a 9. 1957-58 complete set. This was the 27th highest graded set with an average GPA of a 6.08, $20,400. Tip top to bread, Mickey Mantle. I'm curious how this did compared to the one on Fanatics Collect, uh, $28,200. 1952, Eddie Matthews on a seven. Most expensive top space rookie card in low grades, $34,800. 1952 Mansa 15 37.8. Give me that Eddie Matthews all day. Tougher card to find. Jackie Robinson. Best wishes, Jackie Robinson signature. 12 examples of this card are signed. This is a really nice looking copy. I'm I'm surprised that they didn't get the dual grade because this at least this is from just appearance, this at least looks like a four to a five, if not higher. John Henry Lloyd. Who's considered the black Hannes Wagner? 343 batting average across a 27 year career. And my awesome spelling on career over there. This one sold for almost $60,000 in the three spot. Probably the rarest card we'll see in this uh, video. Jim Thorpe, 1916 M101 in a PSA 8. There's two 8s out there 185, $61,200. All right, our number one card. Love of the game auctions. 1951 Mantle with the signature. And uh, I'm not sure why this is just authentic on both of these because the card looks nice. And uh, the signature might have been an 8, maybe a 9, but still 32 signed examples. This one sold for $121,000. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, thank you to the following channel members, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna put another auction recap on the, the screen right now. So if you wanna watch another video, make sure to check it out.